Hey, this is David with the Shepherd School, and I got a 5,000 watt generator that I got off Craigslist. It was pretty expensive when it was new. The guy bought it a couple years ago for a storm, used it once, put it up, didn't deal with the fuel in the carburetor, and he couldn't get it started. Which these things with a 10 horsepower pull start engine, they're not easy to start anyway. And so he let me have it for about 200 bucks. Cleaned out the uh, uh, carburetor and it runs. However, it's still a bear to start. And to make it more useful, you know, so the wife can use it if I'm not here, we're going to put an electric start on it. All right, the first thing I did for starting to work is I took, disconnected the fuel line from the fuel filter, let any residual fuel drip into this uh, catch basin because I don't want to work on stuff with a fuel tank. All right, here's the side of our generator. This is the actual engine. It's a Tecumseh HM100, which is a pretty common um, generator for conversions. And before you even consider trying to make the thing electric start or not, you need to look at your engine block. If it doesn't have mounting holes, okay, and the, the uh, don't have this access plate to get into the flywheel, forget it. Okay, it ain't worth it. Next thing you need to do is take this off. Whoa, hello, guys. But some flywheels have ridges, teeth, for a starter motor, and some of them do not. If yours does not, what you can do is order online and try to buy you a uh, flywheel. And if that's the case, pull all this off and switch flywheels. Other things you're going to need are a starter motor. Okay. Um, got this one off of Amazon for the HM100 Tecumseh engine. The uh, positive power goes here. The negative is going to go to the engine block. And uh, that's the starter. Be careful. They have 12 volt starters and 100 volt starters. Uh, 110 volt starters. And you could buy... 110 volt starter kit you know for things like snow blowers or whatever that uh, you plug in the wall but since this is a backup power this is the way I'm going to use this or, or out when I'm camping or whatever out on the truck I don't want to run it off 110 volts because I might not have it you gonna need some sort of push switch this one will actually handle the 12 volts it won't burn out but mounting it is a problem so I went down to the auto parts store and got me the cheapest 12 volt solenoid they had. Um, if you don't get a high amp switch, you're going to need a solenoid to keep from burning your switch out. Four bolts, two on each side. Gas tank comes straight out. I'm going to set that off. Okay, with the gas tank off, I've got this plate, skid plate, and it's got a couple of holes drilled in it. And that's where I'm going to try to mount the uh, solenoid. All right, so I use flat screws because the gas tank sits here and the uh, propane conversion I'm gonna do uh, lets me still use the gas can, so I didn't want anything up here that can rub, okay? Here's the teeth. I'd take the cover off. This mounts here, and when the starter's energized, it kicks out and catches those teeth. Okay, and that will turn the uh, starter. And I've got to make sure that everything engages. All right, all right. So I'm not done wiring it up, but before I put the cover back on, I want to make sure it works. And this isn't uh, totally done. They do have this. This is the bell housing for the starter. It's got this bar here. I'm going to have to cut that out. Alright, so we got it all done and we're not going to start it yet because the next pro process is uh, hooking the thing up so it'll work on dual fuel propane and, uh, and gas, right? High pressure propane, low pressure propane and gas. We'll talk about that later uh, once we put the uh, propanecarb.com kit on. But uh, I had to modify some stuff out of the bell housing or this cover. I uh, had to cut some stuff off, mounted it in. What happens is, 
I've got the uh, juice from the battery coming in on my extension cord over here. It comes down. Put the press start button in. That comes in. I'm going to end up mounting that there with a uh, one of those cable pull grommet things. But uh, I didn't want to go back to the store. Tied it in there so it won't pull. Tied all my stuff together. So the power comes down through here. Comes into my solenoid. And the solenoid grounds off of the connection. But since everything's painted up, I made another ground wire that comes off of the, where it bolts in. And it goes onto the engine block. So the power comes into the solenoid here. And then I've got a runner off down here to the energizing part of the solenoid, right? So power, power comes in, the big one. It can't go through to the motor until the switch is activated. So the power branches off here, comes up here to the switch. Switch cable flows down, goes into my switch. When I press the switch, it comes back up. Makes a little electromagnet inside the solenoid, pulls it forward or pulls it to the back, connects it up, power comes out into my starter, starter kicks forward, the uh, gears engage, and it works. Here's my battery chargers, right? You ready? Let me tell you, that is a thousand times easier than pull starting a 10 horsepower motor, especially one that sits all the time. So next up, I'm going to install the propane over here, the propane adapter, put the fuel tank back on here, then we'll take it outside and I'll show you that it works.